Hello there, I am Lisa Wickham and this is World Talk. I am President and CEO of Imagine Media, producer and director, and through my travels around the world, I've met some really amazing people. And what I intend to do today is to share one of those inspiring stories with you, Dr. Diane Riney, who's coming in live from London. Diane is a global female ambassador uh, and she is a journalist, she's an author, she is so many things and she's also a survivor of domestic violence. I can't wait to chat with her. We're going to be talking about her life as well as the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as uh, the Black Wall Street and the recovery of the Black Wall Street. Now, if you have missed any of our World Talk episodes, you can log on to my uh, YouTube, you can log on to YouTube and subscribe to my channel and you can check out some of the previous episodes of World Talk. All right, we want to say thank you to those who've made it possible. Have a set uh, productions. Inno Media, as well as Imagine Media, Leroy Smart, and uh, Genesis Productions, as well as Digicel. All right, so guys, we're going to take in a few messages. When we come back, I'm going to link up with Dr. Diane Riney, live from London. is World Talk and let's go across live to London now where Dr. Diane Riney is on standby. Hello, Dr. Riney. Hi, Hi Diane. How are you, Lisa? <laughs> I am so good. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in like almost eight years in person, really. I, I think know, it just makes it quickly. That. It does, it does, it does. And listen, you are, let me get it correct, you're an award-winning global ambassador for female empowerment. You're a journalist, you're an activist, you're a philanthropist, you're an author, you're a mother, and you're also a survivor. We're going to be talking about all of that and more. And, um, and also, uh, you are in London right now where COVID-19 is really, it's like a hotspot really for COVID-19. How have you been coping? Oh, well, it's been an interesting one. So, um, I think it's, you know, I'm sort of getting used to this new normal, I yeah, call it. Yeah. Um, um, one of the twins actually has health issues. So we've been uh, um, being in the house and not being out. So mm -hmm. it's been a really strange experience. But yeah. it's given me time to really look at where I am in life, what I want to do, amongst homeschooling, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you've been homeschooling as well. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, which is really interesting yeah. to become a, a teacher. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of parents have been saying that they appreciate now the value of teachers since COVID 19. But I want to talk about you because you know, we can go on chatting <laughs> so much about many other things. What is a global ambassador for female empowerment? Well. Do you know what? It's so funny. I was awarded that because I do work with women all over the world. Mm -hmm. And my main thing is about making women and getting them to believe they can be the best version of themselves. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of us suffer with imposter syndrome um, and just don't feel that we can go that extra mile. Well, for me, it's about you can. We're going to dig deep. It's a mixture of my own personal experiences. It's about um, my profession as a um, psychologist. All of these things that we can look at to really empower the next generation of amazing mm -hmm. women to come. I'm telling you, there's yeah. some right ones out there yeah. at the moment. <laughs> because you've been all thing. over the world, haven't you? You've, been, you've spoken to audiences of 30,000 in the US. Mm -hmm. 
and you've mentored young people or persons, yeah. of, women of all ages in the UK. Yes. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the yes. work that you do. Yeah. So I've done some work in Zimbabwe and that was. Okay, guys, I think that we got cut off there for a little bit. And we're going to see if we have Dr. Diane Riney. She's such an interesting person. I promise you, you need to stay with us. Okay, guys, we're going to take in a few messages, come back and see if we can reconnect with Dr. Diane Riney live from London. Stay with us. Okay, thank you for staying with us. This is World Talk, and we're going to see if we can switch back now live to London, where Dr. Diane Riney has been chatting with me, and she is, I promise you, worth the wait. <laughs> Diane, <laughs> you Hello. are. You are certainly worth the wait. <laughs> and uh, for the break, we were talking about the work that you've been doing with young people, mentoring people, speaking with people all over the world, and you were taking us to Zimbabwe. Um, so Zimbabwe is really supporting an organization um, in regards to they use theatre as a way to deal with domestic violence and educate the women out there. It's, it's powerful. Yeah. Um, and it's funny, in South Africa, it's the same sort of thing. There's a lot of, um, unfortunately, domestic violence that goes on around the world that affect women. Mm -hmm. And when I've gone to countries, third world countries, there's always been um, a particular issue in regards to domestic violence. And um, so where there's, where I needed, I'm always gonna go out. It's something really passionate, I'm passionate about. Um, but I'll go to somewhere like the US and, and, and it's about just women suffering from imposter syndrome, trying to get out of that corporate ladder, um, being entrepreneurs. So it's a range of things. I think women are most, yeah. most complex as you know yeah. so we deal with many so we're going to talk about domestic violence but you keep referring to the imposter syndrome tell us exactly what that is so it's it's you know you know you're you you're good at something but you tell yourself you're not and you don't feel worthy so you're 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 you know let's say I, like me i when i had when i went through my situation regarding domestic violence I think that experience, I was a very confident person. And I remember, it's funny, I was speaking in Washington. And I, for the first time, went on the stage and I literally froze. I just thought, I can't do this. I, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, I'm not worthy. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. They're going to know I'm, a, you know. And I just had a complete meltdown mm -hmm. because sometimes when your confidence is knocked you start to doubt yourself in every area of your life um and unfortunately more women suffer with imposter syndrome than men i mean i've got my guy friends you know like they'll get a job and i'm like but you don't even know how to do that they're like <laughs> they, they fake it. it to make it right <laughs> and then they'll learn you know where we're like oh i don't know i can't even yes. do that job no no yeah. i'm not you know so yeah, um, it's something that us women, we, we too have our things to do. So we you help our... women work through this situation, do you? Yes. Yeah. But I want to talk about your personal journey uh, because mm -hmm. you have been described as um, very sensitive to issues of women, especially with regard to issues around domestic abuse. So let's mm -hmm. talk about your journey and your encounter with domestic abuse. But the, the thing is, I... Um, was with a guy and I was traveling a lot and and he seemed really nice and I'd been single for a long time, met him and we dated for um, a couple of years 
Um, but I traveled a lot. So I think there's part of me that really didn't know him. Um, I also was going through a lot and then, you know, my mother died. So I had a lot going on around me at the time. And I, I remember I was sitting in an Atlanta airport and I saw this couple and his um, collar was out and I went to, and I could just see that this couple had an unspoken connection and just knew each other. I thought, you know what, that's what I want in my relationship. So when I came back, I remember saying, you know, I just need to, to get to know me again after all that I'd been through with my mum passing away suddenly. And he told me the only way that I was leaving him is if it is dead. And to be honest, for someone who's not been around violence in that way, I really thought he was joking. I thought, people don't do these things really, you know? Yeah. And I went upstairs thinking, oh, you know, he'll be fine. Didn't think nothing of it. And unfortunately, he he was serious. And he he actually put a gun to my head. And the only reason why I'm here to tell the tale is the gun jammed. I fled. Um, and it was just a whole lot of craziness to the point even after all that I'd went through, saw my life flashed before me, I'm like, it's not domestic violence. I I wasn't beating every day. I wasn't, you know, all of yeah. these things. So and you it had took no me, recognition of it at all? No, I was kind of, you know, you hear, it's about those things until it happens to you. Yeah. Um, um, and that's what, that's why I'm so, so committed it can happen to whether you're rich, poor, black, white, young, old. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it was the after effects. I mean, he stalked me. It was just horrific. I mean, I moved. I moved out of London because of him um, and just went quiet for years. Nobody knew where I was or I just kept but it, alone. But that took, you said that that took an effect on your esteem, your self-esteem, on yeah. your work, on your yeah. value. Yeah, you know what? I still think there's still occasionally you get that little niggle, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, you know, sometimes I'll have to think, wake up, what are you, what are you doing? This is, this is not about you, you know, fix up yourself as my mom would say, you know? Um, but yeah, it did really take its knock. And so I've been committed now to working with young women in particular, because what I want to be is preventative. It's about education, it's yeah. about explaining and getting people to understand what the signs are. Mm -hmm. And we called the charity um, SWIM, which stands for Strength Within Me. Because to me, it has to come from inside. Mm -hmm. And it's about really building up that resilience and that confidence that if something happens that you just doesn't feel right, or you'll feel that you're being controlled, that you feel empowered to say, no, yeah. this is not okay. Yeah, and you're okay now. <laughs> I'm good. Girl, I'm so good. Mm -hmm. I am so good. <laughs> so you developed a concept called Uology. Mm -hmm. What is that? So that's all about the power of you, and it's a combination of experiences, psychology, um, empowerment tools, and we do workshops. Uh, mentoring mm -hmm. and it really is about going through a program where you really begin to look at yourself differently mm -hmm. we go beyond what you could actually believe you can achieve yes um, and I've had so many amazing women go through the program and come out just a different person you know <laughs> And I'm like, you go, girl. This is what it's all about. Yeah. You 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 have a book called All About Me. It just keeps going on and on, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's you know, so so multiple intelligences. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, like, so all about me. And people said, oh, God, that's a bit of a... It actually launches officially. So you've got to know all about it before it uh, launches officially. Um, and it's all, all about... And I do want people to look at all about me differently because that sounds right. It's like... Mm. Who does she think she is? Girl, well, I am all about me. <laughs> and it's saying, yeah. if we do ourselves first, love ourselves first, 
understand ourselves first, we are no good to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at that differently. To me, it's all about me. It's all about me to be mentally um, agile, healthy, confident. So I then can go on to be a, a much better person and anybody around me can flourish. Yes. So the book, so it's part biography. So I talk about certain experience, like the sudden death of my mum, so grief. Um, and then I have some lessons learned. And then I have kind of exercises that hopefully you will find helpful to get you through a similar type situation. Yeah. Now, Diane, you have been through some really challenging times. You're talking about a gun to your head. How did you go from that dark space to where you are now, where you're counseling people, working with people, writing books, doing <laughs> seminars around the world, uh, a journalist as well, you're a radio journalist as well. Uh, yeah. So how did you get back to, that, to yourself? How did you get back to you? Do you know what? It took a lot of soul searching. I went into therapy myself. Um, and you know what the biggest thing for me is I call it, I have an organization called The Tribe. And the reason why it's so important to me is if I didn't have my tribe, those real cool sisters, red dreams, whatever you want to call them around me, I may not have come out the way I have today. And it was about them dealing with some real truths mm -hmm. about myself mm -hmm. and overcoming that. But I went into therapy for a while and it was really helpful. You know, that looking in the mirror, mm -mm. I love me, but I also know what my faults are yes. and I try and work on them every day, yes. you know. Um, but I've always loved like writing, English, all of that kind of stuff. I've always loved media. That's your world as well, Lisa. Yes. I love the power of communication, mm -hmm. you know. And if I think something's unjust, I'm, I'm going to be heard, yeah. you know. I've got a big mouth. You do, and I know you have a big mouth about Black Lives Matter and the Black Wall Street. So we're going to take in a few messages, and when we come back, we're going to talk to Dr. Diane Riney about her views with regard to Black Lives Matter and Black Wall Street after this. This is World Talk. I'm Lisa Wickham and I'm chatting with Dr. Diane Riney live from London. Dr. Diane Riney is a journalist, a female ambassador, an ambassador for female empowerment. Let me get that right. <laughs> a global ambassador for female empowerment as well as an author, philanthropist and so much more. And Diane, uh, you know, I know you're passionate about uh, empowering others and what are your views about the black lives matter and why is it resonating so much around the world at this time i i think this time there's a there's there's been a something there's been a change mm -hmm. um because we've had protests before you know but i think there was something about watching a black man's life be taken in front of us and with COVID-19, people in their houses, more eyeballs than probably ever before, I think it just had a combination of, of an effect. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been talking about certain things for years. Um, and people often will say, oh, God, you're racist. No, I'm not racist. Number one, I can't be racist. I don't have the power. Um, explain, but, explain exactly what you mean by that. Yeah, it's, it's, 
You know, people need to understand what racism is. Racism is a body, an organization of uh, individuals who have the power, the econ e you know, economy, they have power over another. We don't have the power, unfortunately, we've never had it. So we can't be racist, we can be prejudiced. And I'm sure there's lots of us who are prejudiced about certain things, but we can't be racist because we don't have the power. So I am pro-black, yes, I am not racist. I want equality. I don't want to be treated the same because my heritage, my history is not the same. And I don't want you to treat me the same. I just want you to treat me equally. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with COVID going on and with George Floyd, I think um, it just had such an impact on people. But I keep saying that protesting is great. That's the start. That's when you get the attention. What is needed now is about collaboration globally. Um, and it's about reclaiming the economic power. Um, and it's about strategy. You know, because protesting only gets you so far. Yeah. You know, it only gets you so far. So how do you see yeah. this playing out? Because, you know, sometimes I think equality is perhaps a utopian expectation. So how do you see uh, the equality and the call for a black economy and for mm -hmm. Black Wall Street, which, by the way, was destroyed almost 100 years ago? In Tulsa, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, how do you mm -hmm. see this playing out in pockets of uh, equality around the world or mm -hmm. as you said collaboration but but how i think i think here in the uk for once we are starting to work together which is normally the place and the area where we fall down you know um i think for once we all have one voice we are beginning to come together to form that economy where, you know, like me, I sponsor um, people through their education. Um, so I think if we all put together a collection of monies from all over, it could be just be five pounds. It really could. And we build up our own economy. You know, it's like, I look at certain things, like take, take the media where the power where a lot of power you know how they how we're portrayed in the media mm -hmm. but i shouldn't have to go with my hand with my hat in my hand begging for oh could you let me at the table please um could you give me a job to present yeah. you know no as my mom would say if they won't let you at the table build your own table mm, absolutely Build your own table. And I think that's where we are at the moment. It's saying, okay, you don't want to listen to us. Let's build our own table. And and you look at look at like look at us today. I don't need BBC. I don't need ITV. I don't need Channel 5. I don't need all of them. Because now with things like Facebook, social media, all of these kinds of things, we can create our own media that it can be powerful and send ripples globally and i think that's where we need to start because unfortunately media has just so much power yes. and some of the stories even now in the uk that i read they're all tarnished they're not telling you the whole truth yeah we have and to it, tell our own stories and we can exactly. come together across the world and tell our stories which is exactly what we're doing with this yeah today this yeah today exactly mm -hmm. Yeah, but we need to, to do it. I, I believe that there is an opportunity to collaborate with Africa, uh, at the continent, not Africa as a whole, because there are many countries in Africa, but exactly. the continent and the, the diaspora that exists in Europe and the UK and North America and, of course, the Caribbean and come together and collaborate. So of course, can, the yeah. Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, the Caribbean. Let's talk yeah, a little bias. bit. We have just a few more minutes. Of course, the Caribbean, because I think you have Caribbean roots. Correct. Yes, my father's Jamaican. Um, my mom, my late mom, is mixed with Chinese and ah. she's Kittitian from St. Kitts. Oh. Um, 
So, yes, so you are I what am. we call in Trinidad and Tobago a Kalaloo. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. A Kalaloo. You mix up. You mix up. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Like you, Lisa. That's, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> Just the same, just the same, which is why, you know, we, we really need to get to a place where we can exist in harmony. I, again, it may sound utopian, but there are pockets around the world where people do coexist, you know, and coexist in harmony and are able to respect each other's differences and learn from each other's differences and benefit from the diversity that exists in that symbiotic relationship, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I'm I all for that. And, you know, I really, the day that, you know, I've got, when you've got kids, it's, it, it might not happen in my generation, but I definitely will be fighting for it to happen in my girls' generation because they are the next generation, as cliche as it sounds. Yes. And that's what we want for them. We do want them to have that equality. So, Dr. Diane Riney, what's next for you as we have our remaining moments? Can you believe it? Time's up already. What's oh. next for you? <laughs> what's next for you? <laughs> Do you know what? I've got, uh, I'll tell you a little bit of an exclusive. I'm, I, I've got a, um, myself and a, and a lovely man, we have joined together um, to produce, we're going to be having our launch in the next few weeks. Yeah. And we're going to be putting together a black media. Um, and so, you know, girlfriend, I'll be calling, I'll be hitting yes. you up. Yeah? Yes. So, you know, that's what we're going <laughs> to be. And, it, and it's called, you know, um, Black Wall Street Media. Yes. And um, we are going to be telling our stories, doing our things globally. Wonderful. Well, I know we will certainly be connecting, Dr. Diane Ryan, because I think we're on the same wavelength right now. We just had to reconnect like this, yeah, yeah. across the ocean. And it's been so wonderful chatting with you. Please be safe. And you, and you, and you guys be safe. You know, we're, here, we're still in lockdown here, even though it's relaxed. But yeah, yeah. yeah. You well, know, we, we kind of without your health, them. you have mm -hmm. nothing else. So. Yeah. Well, we've been, we've opened up except for the borders and for the schools. So, you know, we're kind of more advanced than you guys right now, but we still have to be safe. Yeah. So I'm blowing you a kiss across the ocean. Oh, <laughs> oh, I caught it. You I caught it. it. You got a little bit of Jamaican accent there. I'm hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Diane Riney, very special, very, very special. What's your website and your handle? Because I know people have been going to be yeah, asking so about my, the book so my, and all of my, that. Yeah, yeah, my personal one is www.dianeriney.com, just my name. Yes. And my, my work one is www.nakedtruth.website. Right. Um, so, yeah, definitely have a look and see if you like. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I know it's uh, evening where you are, so we're going to let you go. Take care of the okay, twins. So nice to see you, Lisa. <laughs> nice Take to see care. You too. All right. Take care right, now. God bless. Mwah. Thank you so much. I'm catching it now. <laughs> <laughs> That was Dr. Diane Riney, journalist, philanthropist, uh, global ambassador for female empowerment and, you know, survivor of domestic violence. And she just travels across the world empowering women, uh, especially in countries in Africa, as well as in the U.S. and the United Kingdom. So I want to thank you for joining us here for another edition of World Talk. I want to thank Digicel very specially for powering us up and all the teams together to make this possible. Remember, you can go on our YouTube, Lisa Wickham, if you've missed some episodes. We've had some really very inspiring people over the past few weeks and you can catch up on it. And if you like what you see, guys, remember it's a team putting this together. And as we talk about what's happening with COVID-19 around the world, the creative sector has been significantly impacted. So what we've done is put together a team and we've also put together a fund me on the w fund me tnt dot com where you can contribute to keep this series alive so go on share 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 and i'll see you next time on will talk